Deadly Tarantula Girl coming to you from my private Serpentarium tonight to bring you something special. I don't think I've ever done a video specifically on this species before. This is a very unique, extraordinary animal commonly known as the desert millipede. Question of the day, if you can identify the scientific name of this species, I would love to hear it. So today, I'm gonna to be showing you some specimens. This is just a catch jar, and I picked up a few of these guys last night. And I wanted to get them set up because obviously this is not a suitable jar. This is too small of a container for everybody, but I wanted to show you how you would set up these desert millipedes as they make really amazing pets. I actually took some of these to the uh, San Antonio, Texas Reptile Expo last year and the people bought a pair or a trio of them and their millipedes have reproduced since then and we've been in touch on Facebook and it's been very, very exciting. So to start off with, um, desert millipedes need a medium substrate as they do like to kind of burrow down and hide sometimes. I used a mixture of cocoa fiber, natural pesticide free soil and vermiculite so it will hold on to the moisture. At this point the substrate is totally dry so I'm gonna dampen it up quite a bit to start off with and then what I will want to be doing in the future is basically damping one corner more than the others and so they'll have a drier and a wetter area to go to and you also need to be careful that you're not just moistening the top of the soil because it can look a little bit wet and muddy and underneath still be totally dry. You can tell by looking at the side of the enclosure or uh, if you're just starting off you probably just want to mix it up and you can see here that most of this stuff underneath is still too tilly to dry. Just gonna mix it up a little bit. Tell you a little bit about millipedes. They get their name from the root mill, which means thousand, because uh, basically they appear to have a thousand legs, which they don't. They are arthropods. And uh, what qualifies them as that is that they have an exoskeleton, a segmented body, and jointed appendages. The oldest prehistoric millipede about 400 million years ago called Pneumodesmus pneumoni, and it was six feet long and a foot and a half in diameter. So how would you like to meet that big guy? So I just have kind of a kooky little piece of wood here. They do like to climb and kind of hide and a uh, little hide. Millipedes are detrivores, which means that they consume detritus, which is basically uh, leaf litter and other things that are found on the ground. And so millipedes serve a very important part in our ecosystem in that they clean up the environment pretty well. Some people confuse millipedes and centipedes and uh, there's a couple really easy ways to tell them apart. First of all, there's several different species of millipedes and of centipedes. Good general rule is overall millipedes have a rounded body and centipedes usually have kind of a flat body. Millipedes have pairs of legs on each segment. So they have, their legs are grouped in groups of two. It's pretty simple. Centipedes are carnivorous and typically more aggressive while millipedes are very gentle, although they can excrete some level of toxin, you simply want to wash your hands before you touch them and after you touch them. I recommend a book by Oren McMonagle called Giant Millipedes, The Enthusiast Handbook. That's a really good one. Overall, I think millipedes are pretty easy to take care of. They do need some humidity 
They cohabitate happily even with the springtails and uh, some species of roaches and stuff like that. They do climb, so you need a lid on whatever they're gonna be in. And they are kind of escape artists, so that's one thing you have to think about. Uh, if you have a little notch in your lid or something, they will test it and they may get out, which I don't think is a real big deal, but just know they can get out. So when millipedes are hatchling, they only have three pairs of legs on each side. And as they grow and develop more segments, they can actually develop up to 200. So you can see this is a younger one, but look how many pairs of legs it has. This one's obviously got some age on it. And then you've got some of these bigger guys that are quite a bit older and quite a bit bigger. Their legs do just kind of pinch, their little feet just kind of pinch when they grab onto you, but it doesn't hurt. They can bite, but they're very gentle. They are nocturnal. They do need a fairly high humidity, so you need some ventilation, but not too much. If you have them in an aquarium or something with a mesh cage, you can do something like cover half of it with plastic to where it'll have less ventilation. A shoe box is appropriate. You want to have them in something that's at least twice their body length. And you can put quite a few of them together as long as they have plenty area to kind of run around and hide. Mm -hmm. But funny enough, they'll tend to kind of cluster together even if they have plenty of room. So they need good airflow. Uh, they do need a water dish or for you to water one end heavily and to be kept uh, around room temperature, which makes it easy. So about mid 70s Fahrenheit. They can eat things like potato peels and carrots and just random fruits and vegetables from your kitchen. Or they can also eat like fish flake or rabbit pellet, some commercial diets that are plant based. The males are, they're difficult to sex, but the males are, appear to be missing their leg segments in the seventh segment. And so if you're really determined to get a sex pair, you can examine their legs. However, they don't display, they're not able to put their legs in that little pouch until they are mature. If you have one that appears to be missing the legs in the seventh segment, and then you find one that appears to have them that is about that size or larger, then you have a pretty good idea that you have a sexed pair. Although, if you wanna be sure, I recommend you just get a whole bunch of them. If you do get a sex pair, they'll typically breed very easily, and then she will usually make a little egg case underneath the soil, and before you know it, you'll have little baby millipedes. This was the desert millipede setup and care. Hope you guys like this one. I found it interesting. I think that these millipedes are really neat to look at. They're funny, they're inquisitive, and I was wondering how intelligent they are. And you know they're frightened when they curl up, which I think is cool. So that one was scared for a minute and then got over it. And just the way they move around and uh, interact with each other, I think is really adorable. So I'm going to go ahead and give them a few natural things to nibble on. They also like to climb on this stuff. And I'm gonna put these guys to bed and check on them tomorrow. They can eat scraps from your kitchen, fruits and vegetables, and even uh, some commercial pet diets that are plant-based like rabbit foods or fish foods. If you're interested in buying one of these millipedes, I will have them on sale for $10 a piece or three for 25. If you would like to be the proud owner of a desert millipede, just email me at deadlytarantulagirl at yahoo.com and we will hook up so you can get some of these beautiful millipedes or tarantulas. Hope you guys liked this very different view of desert millipedes. Dudley Tarantula Girl signing off and I'll see you guys soon.